In this video, I'm going to show you how I took these, animated this, and show you the easiest way to animate physics and After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett, this is The Video Shop. I was teaching simple shapes animation with my class the other day, and I wanted to show how easy it could be to get realistic looking physics. Because keyframe and convincing dynamics in After Effects can be hard. I discuss it in this video. Here we want to take our physics to the next level. Hmm, not something I thought I'd ever proclaim. But, not only will the results arguably be better, the great thing about this is how simple it is. Even complete beginners can achieve great results. As always, if you want to see any of my workings out, the whole process is on the Video Shop Long Play channel. It's 8 hours long, so you might want a comfy chat. And there's the free project file. Oh, and stay tuned to the end for an extra tip for taking your animation to the next level. Okay, let's get started. When I animated this, I was making various shapes for my students to animate. Then I saw this, and it gave me the idea to create this formation using the shapes. Maria, I stole your stack of shapes. I owe you. By the way, her stuff is fantastic, look her up. So then I thought, what properties could these shapes have? And then I jotted down some animation ideas. The texturing will come back to you later. You can leave the shapes black and white when you animate them if you like. So what comes next isn't exactly an industry secret. Lots of character animators do this, but motion designers, not so much. But it's easy. You already have everything you need. Unless you live in the woods without a phone, hunting squirrels for food. Yes, we're shooting a reference. That's what this video is all about. You could do what I did and look around your house, grabbing objects and putting them in front of a camera. Dog, optional. Your phone doesn't need to be the latest model and you can even shoot handheld and stabilize it afterwards. Don't feel like you need extra equipment to do this because you really don't. You can either have an idea of what you want to capture like I did or just drop things and see what happens. For me, some things worked out and some didn't, but they all had results which are unexpected. And actually the ones that didn't work out were even more interesting and useful. I'll explain why later, but first, let's look at how to use our reference footage. Firstly, no, I didn't track it. You could, depending on what you're filming, but I'll tell you a good reason not to later. So you've shot your footage and imported it. You've now got reference for all the shapes in your scene. If you're not using audio, you may want to adjust your frame rate. I brought my reference in and placed it next to my shapes and then copied the movement frame by frame. I have a reference for each object apart from the bowl shape and with something like this where the stack builds over the course of the animation, that's fine. Like me, you might have to revise what you shoot. What I love about this and why I think it's suitable for complete beginners is that the shooting really is the trickiest part. What are your plans when this movie's all over? I shouldn't make movies anymore. I should go to a lunatic asylum. <laughs> if you watch my process video, God help you. You'll see me using the puppet pin tool side by side next to the footage. But if you're not familiar with that tool, that's fine. You could do this, have a shape and trace over using keyframe mask shapes. The point is, once you've shot your footage, there's a way to animate it which can suit any level of motion designer. So what do you actually gain from going to the trouble of shooting footage? Why not just stay on your computer and find some reference online? Let's face it, the shooting can be a pain. I was pulling my hair out for ages shooting this. I wanted a reference for a slight squash on the football to use for this shape, but the towel wasn't playing ball. But then I realized, what am I doing? Stop trying to get what you want. Lean into that imperfection and have the next object come down and land before the slab rolls off. Because in my world, having a heavy bowl land on these objects will make them more stable, not less. But hey, we're not aiming for realism. Abstract, but with realistic physics. Having the bowl land means this green rubber slab can reform its shape. So why shoot reference? Because it will lead you in directions that you wouldn't have thought of. And the more little touches which come from that process, the more realistic feeling your animation will be. Speaking of which, here's the final animation. It isn't perfect. I think the best bits come from the reference footage. The worst are where I had to use my own skills. Basically stitching the different bits together, like here when the bowl lands on the slab. But is it better than this? I don't, well, I don't know. that's up to you. So is this the easiest way to animate geometric shapes in After Effects? Well, for one, you're copying. There's very little room for error. Let's compare these side by side. This one took me six and a half hours and this one took me just over eight. But I spent a lot of time on the design with this. So the time spent animating on both was broadly the same. One benefit is that you're not guessing, you're studying without realizing it. For someone who was actually suspended before his exams, you can imagine how appealing that is to me. You're becoming familiar with some of the 12 principles of animation, which is good reason not to track the footage. 
you're paying more attention to the physics if you copy the motion by hand. And if you just track the movement, you're not allowing for exaggeration. Like here, I wanted to hold on the first movement of this ball for a beat, so I had it bounce higher and hold a tiny bit longer. Once I made this adjustment, I just shifted the reference video along in the timeline and then did the rest. So one last tip that can really take animation like this up a notch is to add a little movement on the z-axis. This is where having a texture really helps. This one I really like. I mean, it's sort of a granite texture, but I made the movement rubbery. That's a fun element you can throw in, a disparity between what you expect and what the animation does. Here the balls are just rotating in 2D, but then here I've moved the texture in the pre-comp so it looks like they're rolling back and forth in Z-Space. I've used the bulge effect, but you could use CC Sphere. The same here with the red ball moving backwards slightly. And that's it. If you're a beginner, I'd really think about shooting footage like this early in your motion design journey. I wish I'd done more of it myself. Who knows what I'll be doing now. Hope this was useful. If you're a complete beginner and you found any of this a bit too complicated, you might want to watch this to familiarize yourself with the basics of After Effects. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.